Blackmagic Design, creating revolutionary solutions for film, post-production, and television. Hi, I'm Indiana with No Film School, also one of the founders of Cinematography for Actors. I am here with the wonderful Chase, SoCal native, and uh, who now lives in Oregon. It's a pretty exciting adventure for you. Hi, Chase. Hi there. How's it going, Indiana? Good. Let's talk about it. Great, so let's talk about the new Alexa 35 Live that we announced just before NAB. It's the first time you're able to see the camera. And what we have here is the Alexa 35 Live, and it's a combination of our Alexa 35 camera system at the front, so you can kind of see this black line here. That's where the Alexa 35 ends and the live back end comes into play. So to combine together, we call it the Alexa 35 Live system. And so people have, for many years have been now using the Alexa 35. They love the image quality. They love the dynamic range, 17 stops. Uh, high frame rates, best low light performance for an Aerie camera, which is fantastic. Aerie color science has been redone, the new textures feature, so they're really loving the 35, but then they want to take it beyond just cinematic application, shooting feature films, commercials, music videos, they want to bring it to live entertainment. So for years now, people have been using Aerie cameras for covering concerts, for live comedy, for example, that's going to be streamed, and even some people now, surprisingly, for sports, which is, is not normally what we're known for as Aerie. Uh, in a lot of ways. And so what we're doing here is we're integrating this live production system. We call it LPS-1, and that's the back end of the camera. So you can remove it with three screws and use your Alexa 35 front end as a regular Alexa 35, go shoot your feature film. And then you can connect it back in when you're gonna do live production. And what it does is it docks over and it gets all your video connectors and your Genlock connectors for synchronization connected. Then we have one cable for ethernet, which is for our camera control. We tried to keep everything integrated so there's less cabling, but we couldn't get quite to the ethernet connector. Then over here on this side, what we're going to see is that it looks a lot like a live production camera, like a system camera, maybe even what you would call a broadcast camera, because it's got all these different I.O. connectors for intercom, for talking to people down the line. You've got production and engineering connectors, so it's a lot more familiar if you're used to doing broadcast camera systems. Uh, we've added a lot of interesting features, too, so we had customers say, um, beyond just having return video, can we have multiple return videos? We need to see multiple pictures up here from different sources, and so we have four return videos that you can switch between, which is really, really fantastic. Return video is, so let's say you're making a production and you want to see what's going out live to air. The return video is the video coming back up to the operator to see what's going out live, maybe what the other camera positions are doing, maybe the live without the graphic overlays for your sports, let's say, and one that has the graphic overlays. So a lot of us, yeah, we normally ask, why do you need four? But if you talk to the sports guys, especially, they say, oh, we got to have four return videos. So we put four in there. A lot of other features. We have a second separate fiber tunnel. and. That's really good. So that's a question where customers are saying, uh, I want to send everything over fiber, but maybe I want to have another camera nearby where I just want to send the data over fiber, not the power, which this cable does. So this tunnel here is a separate fiber tunnel. So if you had two Alexa 35s next to each other and you wanted to take one of them and send it down with the other Alexa 35 live, you could send everything over fiber, which is data, video, intercom, everything but power, down the second tunnel so you'd only use one of these cables for two cameras. So it's kind of a way of multiplexing multiple cameras or anything. They might not even be cameras, anything down a fiber tunnel. Think of it as like another chain, a path down back and forth between the camera position and wherever you are down in the control room or in the truck. Audio connectors, fiber tunnel we talked about, some power connectors, Aerie style. We've got SDI outputs for video, uh, another return video output if you had another monitor that you wanted to do return. Your reference output, which is for your gen lock and your sync, so maybe you want to send that out and synchronize something else over here. You have an auxiliary 12G 4K SDI that comes up, so maybe you wanted to send another path for a teleprompter, or you maybe wanted to do it for another 4K monitor for your DP that's up near the cameras, let's say. So there's a lot of paths up and down. We've got a over here connectors for data. So this one is to plug in the RCP, which is the remote control panel we'll see shortly over here. And that's for camera control remotely. But if you wanted to test something, you could plug it right into the camera without going, you know, plugging it in back at the truck. This is a separate gigabit ethernet tunnel. And so this is just a data tunnel for ethernet data. So if you had other devices, or maybe you had some other, uh, maybe PTZ small cameras that you wanted to feed down as a reference, down here, you could actually feed them down a separate gigabit ethernet tunnel. So it's like a separated data tunnel that's different from what the camera control is. So a lot of pass-through, I mean, as you can tell for fiber, the more you can move down the fiber, um, the more convenient it is and, and more configurable it is depending on the kind of work you're doing. Because you never know with live production, you could be doing a football game one week, you could be doing a comedy special, you could be doing a concert. So we literally tried to build everything in the kitchen sink in here. Yeah.
And then yeah. what is the panel? Oh, let's take a look. So over here, this is, excuse me, this is called an RCP panel or an OCP panel, depends on what company you're coming from and broadcast, but RCP, OCP is very common. And this is a control panel for the camera. So for customers that want to control the camera remotely, this is a great interface where you've got all these hard controls, and then you also have the ability to paint the camera or adjust the video parameters and color. Uh, what's unique about this panel is it's super customizable. So what that's nice about this is you can see they have little OLED screens on them. You could say, hey, I don't like that button there, I want to move it here. So in the web configure, you can move every single knob and a button and relabel them to however you want. So for your configuration, it might work better one way or another. The panel can do things like trigger record, start, stop. It can do playback in the camera. You can do the clip list. You could jog through a clip to fast forward and play it back. You can load the camera setup. You can load different look files, which are also what we call LUTs. You can do text textures, so you can change through the different area textures in addition to just adjusting the video parameters. So it's a fully featured panel for control, because normally for multicam, the camera operator is just worrying about zoom and focus and pan and tilt. They're not doing the camera control like they would on a cinema set. Yes. Wow, fantastic. And yeah. how long has this been in the works for? A couple years now, it's basically since we l released the Alexa 35, the first question was, okay, Amira Live, you had that, when's the Alexa 35 oh, Live coming out? So, so quite some time. We even did stuff like, for example, this LLA, long lens adapter. Our friends at Fuji make this great lens, yeah. 25 to 1000, and they make a, a universal bracket, but a universal bracket's not always a bad thing, but not always a good thing, because when you're trying to get your camera in quickly, having to adjust it becomes very difficult and time consuming. So a lot of our customers said, we want to use this lens on the front, but we would love to have something that's quicker to mount the camera. And so this LLA1, long lens adapter one, it works with a pressure plate system. So the way it works is you put the standard, this special plate here, it comes with the LLA on the bottom of the 35, you slide it in, and then within two seconds you can lock or unlock it without having to fuddle with the height adjustments and a screwdriver and the forward and backwards and all of these balancing things. So it literally is just a pressure plate that you slide the camera in, close the lens mount, put it on in literally a few seconds instead of having to guess where forward and backwards and up and down the camera goes in the LLA. If, someone, if one of the, the 35 owners yeah. wanted to they could buy just the LPS extension system. So you could get the, you use your 35, uh, and then you would basically buy LPS-1 extension. And then this is the LPS-1 at the camera, but then there's also the LPS-1 base station. So LPS-1 is, this is the second part of it, right? So we have everything at the camera coming down the fiber. Yeah. Then it's going to come here to what we call the base station. Sometimes other companies call it CCU, but we, we call it base station. And what you can see here is it's a two rack unit system, which is pretty normal. At the front, it has two power supplies, one backup and one primary. So they're hot swappable. So if one goes down, uh, you lose power from one of your generators, it'll automatically switch to the other generator. Because a lot for live production, you want to get power from two places because you can't afford for anything to go to down in the middle of the game. So you have two power supplies. They're actually hot swappable from the front here. You've got a little screen for adjusting the different settings. There is also a web GUI. So if you're uh, away in, let's say, another state and you want to configure this, you can log into the IP of the base station and adjust the settings. There's also an Ethernet port here. So if you want to try the RCP, they want to plug it in right away and check those controls without having to unwire anything in the back. You have that connector up at the front, which is really nice. This provides enough power for our cameras. So our cameras being cine cameras with the frame rates and the capabilities and the high dynamic range. We need more horsepower, and so that demands more power. This system can provide all the power you need up to two kilometers of SEMPTE 311, which is kind of the maximum you would ever run. Honestly, you might even never run it that long, but this system is fully powered and data and video and everything you're going to need up to two kilometers with that SEMPTE 311. What do you mean? I've never heard this before. What's ah, two kilometer, what? A kilometer, right? I'm right. Canadian, there you go. Yes, 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 we would say two kilometers, whatever it is. Honestly, you probably wouldn't run it that far because if you feel this cable, it's not terribly light, but you could run it, you know, a very long distance if you needed to. Yes, the power supply can provide enough. It, 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 so it goes up, it, it powers the camera. There is some line loss, you're absolutely right. So it can do, the camera only uses um, anywhere from about 100-ish a, a watts with no accessories to maybe a little more with accessories, but we can do up to 400 watts, way more than you need at one kilometer, and up to 250 watts at two kilometers. And when so. you say at one kilometer, two kilometers, yeah. that means that like, before it just won't power anymore? Or are you, like, you could run the data much further. So then, that's a very good question. This is what's called SEMPTE 311, and that's two lines of copper, two lines of fiber, fiber for data, 
copper for power. There is a converter you can get if you don't want to run the 311 because it's bigger and heavier and more expensive. Yeah. You can convert this to what's called uh, tactical fiber, um, which is just the, the two lines of optical, the fiber optic. Okay. And that little converter is passive. It just sits here and, and you get that. And that's very thin. And usually their tactical fiber is military spec, so it has a strong outer shield so you don't crush it. Yeah. And that can run up to 10 kilometers. Uh, but it's only it's passive data so you would have to power the camera locally with some kind of power and excuse my inexperience with this what no worries after the 10 i just don't you don't get a signal for anything yet yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 but yeah you yeah I, I yeah 10 kilometer like let's say you were doing a state even a big stadium i mean even the, the biggest advantage to the 10 kilometers is that lighter weight more inexpensive cable um than, than the heavier one that does power so it's a matter of what you want you want everything all in one but it's a bigger heavier more expensive cable but there is easy flexibility um, but this base station is incredible too because it also does something called sempty 2110 okay. so we're used to in you know cinema production sdi connectors yes. and that's what's what referred to as um, a baseband in broadcast when okay. you say baseband that means that it's copper but this can do, of course, baseband, copper, SDI, it's got a lot of outputs, but it can, it's future-proof because SEMTI 2110 is everything over IP, so it's over the internet. It's essentially just data, and so this does SEMTI 2110, which is the standard, yeah. but it also does what's called 2022-7, so SEMTI 2022-7, which is part of SEMTI 2110, and that means that it actually sends out two SEMTI 2110 networks, so if one is ever to go down, the packets are automatically received from the other one, so there's no loss in anything. It's it's basically two networks, a redundant and a primary, that are just running automatically. So a lot of redundancy, a lot of features. Again, does everything. I uh, for, is it an airy product? Yes, I didn't you build. It. It. I yes, didn't build. Yes, I yes, no, yes, no, 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 no. Yes, yes, I'm yes. smart, but I'm not yes. that smart. Uh, it basically does everything that you need, uh, except make espresso. Okay, great. Yeah, well, that's well, a license, maybe in the future version yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly yeah. for 25k. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Yeah.